Our next guests are considered to be among the greatest production duos in the history of music with more than 100 million albums sold in collaborations with artists like Janet Jackson, Boyz II Men, Mariah Carey, and countless others. And now after 40 years, more than that really, of making music for others, they've now finally decided to release their very own debut album. It's called Jam and Lewis Volume One. And here's a snippet from their song, Somewhat Loved with Mariah Carey. James Harris III, also known as Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis, they join us now. Gentlemen, so good to have you on the show. Congratulations. Jimmy, let me start with you. Just a simple question. Why now? After so much time working together, why did you decide that now was the right time for your debut album? Well, we started the project uh, 35 years ago, around the same time we were doing a little album called Control. Right. And when we thought we were done with the Control album, uh, there was one last song that was for our album that Janet heard, decided she wanted it. That song became What Have You Done For Me Lately? It launched her career. It ended ours, at least as artists. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it's taken all this time to not give songs to other artists. We have just kind of finally got selfish and said, we're keeping songs for ourselves. And that's why we now have an album. And, and tell me what nostalgia means exactly. Um, well, nostalgia is really the feeling of discovery of something new, hearing something new that you love, um, combined with that feeling of comfort and uh, warmness that you get from, feel from hearing something that's familiar to you. So hopefully the songs on the album, when you hear the Mariah song, it reminds you of why you fell in love with Mariah in the first place. But it's, it's exciting and new because it's something brand new that you haven't heard before. And we want to try to do that with all the songs on the album. And Terry, what is it, 35 years later, any regrets about giving uh, Janet Jackson that beat of, of what have you done for me lately? Not one regret at all. Um, work well for her. I don't know who to work with it as well for, for us, but uh, it's been a great 35 years. You know, the only regret I would have is that I couldn't slow the time down and actually enjoy it more. Right. Yeah, that, I think that's so true for many of us. And, and Terry, just sticking with you for a moment, let's go back to the beginning. You both grew up in Minneapolis, even went to the same high school, but you actually met at a music program at the University of Minnesota. How did you decide to join forces and then make music together? Well, we respected each other so much. We would uh, be in battles of the band against each other. And uh, Jam was always a formidable uh, competitor. And boy, he got me a couple times where, where his band just killed my band. Um, so I had to go back and retool a couple times. But I always wanted to get him on my team. It's, you know, you want the best player to be on your team. So I would just go after him every day. I would call him relentlessly until he finally consented. Mm -hmm. And so we've been partners ever since. And, and Jimmy, tell me about your roots as far as music goes with Cornbread, Harris, and, and then beyond that, you know, together you guys have won the five Grammy Awards, written 16 number one hits, including eight for Janet Jackson. Why do you think that practically everything you touch turns into a hit? Well, I think we work with really great artists and they make us look really good. Um, but yeah, going back to the Minneapolis days, I was a drummer in my dad's band, Cornbread Harris, and I was the drummer. Terry was the one that actually told me I should be a keyboard player because my dad played keyboard. So Terry totally turned my life around in that sense. Um, but really, we just, um, I don't know, we just, we enjoy making the music for the artists. If the artists inspire a song to come from us, then to me, the production of it is just finishing it. So we always, Terry always says, we're musicians first, writers second, and producers third. And it always kind of comes in that order, I guess. And you guys just, were just talking about your inspiration for the music. Who's the inspiration for the look? Because it looks like I'm talking to men in black right now. Uh oh. <laughs> well, we definitely are in black. We're blacks in black. No problem. <laughs> yes, uh, right. But it's the, presence, it's, a, it's the presence of all color is black. And um, that's what we feel about it. But going back to when we first met, you know, we were looking today at old pictures and Terry's in a fedora with a suit on. He's got a red, black and green bass and he's doing his thing. Um, we always wanted to um, look nice. And in the old days when we didn't really have a lot of money, we'd go to the thrift stores and we'd buy like old suits and stuff and old hats and we'd get them tailored up. And that was the look. And when we did the time, which was 40 years ago, the first time album came out, 
all the suits that we were wearing on the cover of the Time album were all from thrift stores. But it's a look that's a classic look, and we try to make classic music. So we figured the look, the look goes with the with the sound. It yes, my, my grandmother that uh, gentlemen wore hats, yeah. and, and everybody, uh, male adults in my family, all wore hats and suits. So it's it's all been part of my DNA forever. And it works. As my grandfather used to say, you guys are looking clean as the board of health. But, but Terry, your album's out now. Uh, talk us through what it, what it was like to make your debut album compared to producing and writing music for other artists. How does that feel to be the headliners for once? Well, it's the same process. Um, the only difference is that at the end of it, you can't let it go. Usually we make the record, we do the creation, yep. we do the mixes, we master it and we give it to the artist, they go make the video. But this time we had to sit at the table and determine what the video was gonna be and that we had to be in it. So it's just a couple extra steps and it's, it's been a little different, but it's been a lot of fun. And last question to you, Jimmy, what can fans expect to hear from the album and, and are there more on the horizon? Well, we called the album Volume One very purposefully because we feel like, uh, I always say like when LeBron went to Miami to play basketball and he said, not two, not three, not four with the championships. That's the way we feel about Volume One. It is just the first volume. It's 10 songs. It's about 45 minutes. We always like people to listen to it just as an album. Uh, hopefully they'll enjoy that and always pick, you know, pick your favorite songs. But the idea is really making the artists, your favorite artists sound like themselves, the most like themselves they can possibly sound and rem and remind you of why you fell in love with those artists the first time that you heard them. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, congratulations on your debut album. All the best to you. Remember their album, Jam and Lewis, Volume 1, is now available. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.